It's great to be here. Um, I think I'm, I'm now going to tell you a little bit more on a detailed level what we tried to do different uh, in the product. Our product actually mainly, if we go to the first slide, it's mainly driven by design, by the user experience. Um, I would like to tell you on, on the next slide, I would like to tell you, I think design has changed a lot of industries. Uh, design has changed uh, the fashion industry, it has changed the uh, travel industry, but it has also changed uh, the music industry. And with design, I always mean user experience, but also how the user interfaces are, are looking. On the next slide, everything normally in FinTech starts with the sign-up. So normally, you have to start with the sign-up. So what did we try to do different? On the left side, you actually see a traditional bank and how it looks like if you open a bank account. So it's normally a lot of fields, it's very complex, it doesn't work on mobile. So what we try to do is, we try to create a really cool experience on your smartphone. So what we do is actually, we always try to put your mobile phone first. So if we, if we design uh, the sign-up process, we try to do it first on mobile. So what do we do? We try to do it lean. We try to split it up in a lot of, uh, on a lot of different screens. And I think that's the fundamental difference. We tried to reinvent the sign-up. Do you have to sign up for a bank account on paper? We said no. So if you open up our bank account, you can do that completely on your mobile phone without signing, signing any papers. So you do that, normally I would say I, the fastest sign up that ever, ever took place on our platform, I think it took uh, uh, four minutes, around four minutes. Um, so you create a, a, a bank account in four minutes. Last time I talked to someone uh, from a traditional uh, German bank and they told me, actually they trained, that it's a sign up for a bank account should normally take one and a half hours at least to get to know the customer. So you know, customer, customer's customer behavior has changed completely. And uh, it's, it's, it's a question of how you approach the customer. So after the sign up, we're on the next slide. Um, actually, I have to get the, the, the switch so I can, I can really go to the next slide here. Yes. Um, um, uh, I think the next thing is actually, how do you communicate with the consumer? Um, and that's what we heard before in the presentation. I think banks tend to be and to write much too much information, much too much text heavy, and we try to do actually everything digital, not uh, um, 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 via paper, but also in a way that people like to read it, yeah? um, point out important things. So here I compared an email that you get from a traditional bank and an email that you get from us. Um, after uh, having communication, you have signed up, you communicated to the customer, you uh, activated him to use the account. Um, it's about the overview. And we heard something in the presentation before. I think most of the people are normally overwhelmed by the information they're getting. So uh, today, actually, if you look at your bank account, most of the people don't know what's important to them. So we, we heard some questions before, so they don't, sometimes don't even know um, um, how interest rate is paid out. So I put up some, some interfaces from, uh, actually, I would say, successful German banks and how their mobile interfaces look like. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, that you know where to look at, at the screens and, and you get the important information first. So how do we do it uh, with our product? What we tried is actually to prioritize. We really pr prioritize information. We're currently working a lot on putting much more intelligence into account because we believe that people are interested not in all transactions, but in the transactions that maybe are not regular. Then what we try to do is we do everything with one click. Yeah? So we really try to make that experience intuitive and very easy. Yeah? So if you, I don't know, you, every one of you has a bank account. If you remember the last time you logged into your, if, if there is a mobile app, yeah, if you looked, logged into that mobile app, maybe it's very difficult to find the right, the right things that you are looking, at that, uh, looking for at that moment. So on, on the screen you see, actually on one hand, you see how we display transactions. I think there's going to happen a lot more innovation uh, within the next like 12 to 18 months because we're trying to put much more intelligence into your account. I don't believe in uh, showing your transactions in a historical or in a, in a chronological order. 
yeah, I think you should see the transactions that are important to you and the rest you maybe shouldn't see. And the second screen that I'm showing you is a detailed screen. So if you go into a specific transaction, you already know uh, in, in, in which area you spend the money. So we do that automatically in the background for you. So you get a very good overview. Um, here on the next slide, um, one thing, what is one, one of the important things with your bank account? Transferring money to, to, to other people or on other accounts. Uh, I put up here some interfaces of traditional banks uh, and how you do a transfer. Looks very really complex, yeah, especially on mobile. Um, what we try to do, uh, again, optimize that for, for mobile. We, do, we try to do it very simple. Yeah? So you have three screens, uh, you type in an amount, you type in a topic, and you execute the transfer. It's pretty straightforward, uh, easy to use, and it's taking place immediately. So if you execute a transfer on our platform, you see it the same second on your balance statement. I think that's very important because uh, at that time, it's not so much that, that you need to see it uh, uh, immediately, but it's more that you can, that you can put uh, that transfer, you, can, you don't have to think about it anymore. So last time, I'll give you an example. I, um, I, I, I transferred my, my rent uh, um, from my bank account, and then, or I think it was a one-time payment for, for the guys who were renting out my apartment. Um, and I was al already late, yeah, you know, in the startup you're always too late because you have too less time. Uh, and um, then I executed the transfer with, the, with my bank in Germany. And then actually um, it, it went through, everything went well. And then a week later I got an offline letter telling me uh, that the transfer didn't go through. I, was, I, I, don't even know, I didn't even know that they're sending out letters for that, yeah? So, and then, uh, of course, yeah, I was a little confused because I got that letter one week later. I was already late, yeah, so I called them up and said, okay, sorry. Um, but it was a very strange experience. So, I think if you see that in real time, yeah, you can, you can say, okay, that's, that's a closed transaction and you can go on. Um, so, I, I, one example, yeah? So, I think most of you uh, uh, um, have been in a situation uh, where you have lost uh, uh, a card, yeah? Um, <laughs> Um, but what do you do? Um, so how do banks deal with this? Yeah? Um, normally you have to search for a number that you have to call. You don't find a number. You go into an application. Within the application, uh, normally you're directed to the call center. So you have, you're not friction free. You have, to, you have to change channels. So what did we to do? Um, I think the call in general is not the most efficient way. So what did we say? Let's put all the things that you traditionally did over a call center, put it directly into your application. So currently our application is uh, still only available in German, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a German screen that you're seeing, um, but it's available I think uh, next week or the week after also in English. But what do we do? What do we try to put into, uh, into the application? So in the application you can actually block your card or unblock your card with a simple click. Yeah? So you don't have to call anybody, it's friction free, you can do that on mobile. You can also turn off or turn on the ATM. So that's very important. I think. Uh, and it's, it's one of, of the parts where I think it's important to have a good user interface in the front, but you also have to have the right technology in the background. So I don't think that we can uh, be just or be innovative and disruptive only on the front end, but you have to own the technology in the back as well. So why can we uh, 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 do that? Why can't other banks uh, enable their customers to block the card instantly? Yeah? In general, because they're using much older uh, technology in the back, and uh, that's what we are doing different. And why can't banks do it? I think it's, it's because uh, um, that's when, I, when, I, when, when, when people are young, yeah, and they try to, I, I try to explain to my grandmother um, um, how to use uh, 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 internet. Yeah? So that's kind of, I think that's a picture for how banks are acting today in the digital world. Yeah? So, um, I also, I'm not afraid at all that banks are, are catching up with the development. Yeah? So I'm, I'm more looking at other startups that are growing. Um, and if we have seen the, the numbers before, what banks are spending on uh, digitalization, on, on, on tech, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And the only thing I, I can explain uh, uh, what's happening there is, is with this picture. So what are we doing different? Um, I would say um, um, we do everything mobile first. That's what I've said to you before. Um, the other thing, and that's, that's a thing that I think is, is not true, and, and banks are always claiming. They're always claiming because they have branches. They're close to the customers. What we see is actually that our customers are opening our app at least every two days. 
So we have, a, we have a lot of touch points with them. So we know exactly what they are doing. We know exactly what's the need. Then we have a, a, a very good like, information center for our customer service center where we can actually react to what customers need if they call us. We already see what were the last transactions on. So technology is enabling you to be very close to the customer, and that's very important. Then I think, and that's a fundamental problem, and uh, um, I think that's, I don't know, I have no solution to change it, um, but I think the age uh, is important. So um, I'm 29 at the moment, but I think uh, someone who's 18 has a completely different approach to using the smartphone. So it's already, for me, it's difficult uh, to use my smartphone in a way an 18-year-old, a 16-year-old uses his smartphone. But imagine you have just people that are 60 or 55 on your board, yeah, uh, and deciding about your digital strategy. I think that's kind of challenging. Yeah? Uh, I find it challenging already yeah, to, to take the right decisions on mobile and for a mobile product. But I think that's, uh, that's true for most of the banks. Yeah? If you look at the average age uh, on, on boards or uh, on, on uh, MD level, then I think it's not the digital generation. And then uh, I think you have to have a much bigger share of tech people in your organization Less marketing people, more tech people. So that's what we're trying to do. So we, we have uh, uh, about, the average age is about 28 in our company, uh, maybe already too old. And uh, uh, um, um, we have around uh, over 40% of all the people uh, are in, in tech space. Maybe the last sentence on, on, on uh, where I think um, that, we, that we are going. Um, I think it's uh, three things that are, are mainly coming together. It's a big regulatory change, so that's what we heard in the, in the beginning. It's a big regulatory change that suddenly enables you to build one bank for Europe. I think globally it's going to be a little more diff difficult, but at least for Europe you can, you can serve the whole European market with one bank. Then I think customer behavior has changed fundamentally over the last uh, um, couple of, of years, so 10 years ago you, you booked everything uh, um, uh, that you did on your, on your bank account via your telephone or via fax. Now you do everything online or mobile, and banks have a lot of difficulties. And then uh, the third thing that we are adding uh, to this is actually we have operational excellence. We have completely different uh, um, systems in the background. And all that together, I think it's the right time to build the first truly European bank, and that's what we're working on. Currently, so we have, we have launched beginning of the year. We have already over 20,000 customers uh, that have signed up to, to our account. But we didn't do any marketing so far. So I think that's pretty OK. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to some questions maybe now. You make it sound easy to set up a bank, Valentin. But <laughs> surely there are some challenges, especially in a very regulated market like Germany's. What are the really hard bits you haven't told us about? I think, um, especially in the German market, it's, uh, I mean, now it's, it's, it's got easier to get financing. But I think in, in, if you're an early stage startup and you go to an investor and you tell him, I want to build the European bank, uh, he sends you away normally. So I think it's hard to get early stage funding for fintech companies. It has changed, I think. But um, normally, you need much more funding in the beginning because you, you know, it, it takes some millions to build up a bank in the first place to get an MVP out there. So I think that's one of the challenges. And then I think you have a lot of, I mean, I think what, is, what makes our product different is really that it's easy to use. But what you don't see is how complex it is in the background uh, to, to, to bring that experience to customers. And I think if you do that the right way, so if you, if you manage to, to reduce that complexity, that's also what we heard in the, in the presentations before, and you give the user a great experience by doing it very simple, that's a cool thing. But in the background, it's a lot of issues that you don't even see. Yeah? It's connecting to a core banking system, connecting to a processing system that is maybe 20 years old, it's not so easy. You also need a certain liquidity to set up a bank, otherwise everybody would be doing it. Yeah, so currently, uh, uh, of course, yeah. So you need some liquidity. Um, yeah, but I think that's, that's possible. I always say that's the last myth that the, the banking industry is still having, that they're always claiming that they're the only ones they're regulated, and that's where the product are so bad. But I think um, you can get your own banking license, uh, and uh, you can prove that you can do it wrong, uh, different. So how much do you need to raise to get to the stage you're at? Um, so I think, we, I think you need at least like 
3 million yeah, uh, euros uh, to get to a stage where you can launch a bank, but then you have to be very efficient. Maybe you cannot do that in, in London, in UK. You have to raise maybe double. Uh, um, but in Berlin, you can do that. Uh, it also depends on how many good people you can recruit. And lastly, explain the name number 26. Um, so if you have a Rubik's Cube, so that's the cube with the, with the different uh, colors, um, you will find out that it's exactly uh, consisting of 26 like, little cubes. Um, and what we said is actually if you have the right strategy for the Rubik's Cube, it's very easy to solve. If you don't have a strategy, it's almost impossible to solve. And the same, I think, is true for fintech. Uh, in fintech, if you understand the value chain, if you understand how it works, then you can grant a very slack and, and very cool user experience. If you don't understand it, you're lost. I think that's why we choose the 26 as, as number 26. Okay. Thank you, Valentin. Okay. Thanks.